Hello. So I would like to finish the discussion of zero crossings so that we really have a solid understanding of it. So again, you can think of zero crossings like a proxy for frequency or a way to estimate instantaneous frequency. So if I make this chirp here, this linear chirp, the frequency is going up over time. So if I look at a window towards the beginning, it only crosses the x-axis one, two, three, four, five, six times. But if I look a little later, it crosses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, so on and so forth, like 16 times. So you can see that's a way that you can get an idea of what the frequency is. Um, now you have to look in a window around each sample because you need a little bit of time history to actually count the zero crossings. So I want to talk about how to do this now without using any loops. And to really understand this, you have to understand the cumulative sum um, and how it's like an integral. So I want, to, I want to dive into that a little more. So I worked on some animations, which I think will hopefully help to explain this a little better. So let's look first at just what the cumulative sum does and to convince you that it's something like a definite integral. So, uh, whoops, okay, so I'll say cumulative sum of a line. Okay, so let's look. So let's say that this is our original array. And what I'm showing in blue is um, all the things up to which I'm doing the cumulative sum. So, you know, like this goes one, two, three, four, five. So one plus two is three, plus four is seven, plus five is 12, plus six is 18. And so you end up going up in this form. So this really is like the discrete version of a definite integral. Okay. So that's what the cumulative sum does. So just to show you the code that accomplishes this, um, that's if I say, you know, my array is equal to mp.a range 20, and then I'm saying y is equal to mp.cumulative sum of the array. So just to show you that that's, that's what I get, there it is, okay. So this plot matches that plot there. All right, cool. So that's nice, uh, but how can we use that to help us find zero crossings in a window? Well, I'm going to tell you. So let's look at it, another example of a function that we do a cumulative sum of, or an array that we do a cumulative sum of. So let's look at, um, I'll call it Dirac deltas. That gif. Okay, there's a reason it has that name, but. Um, so it's mostly zero, uh, but every once in a while it spikes at one. So in the cumulative sum, you end up with these jumps. Every time there, there's a one, you jump up to another amount that you've done the cumulative sum of. Okay, so as I'm moving along here, every time I hit one of these, I have one more in my running total. All right, so, so you, you can think of this like an integral. Um, it's a little bit strange because this is actually not a, f okay, well, I won't get into that. This is not a function, which ends up leading to a function that's not continuous. Anyway, whatever. This is something called a distribution, but that's neither here nor there. But I just wanna, I wanna hone in on um, just the last frame of this so I can explain something that's gonna be crucial for how we can do zero crossings in a window without using a loop. So of course you could, you could, you know, you could create a loop to loop through every single window and count the zero crossings. Uh, but that's gonna be pretty slow. So there's a much faster way to do it um, using these cumulative sums, and that's what I'm trying to teach now. Um, so let's just look at the very last frame and, and try to understand this. So if I wanna know how many of these spikes occur between 10 and 30, well, I can see just looking at it that it's two, but I can actually use the cumulative sum to tell me that as well. Because what I can do is look at the cumulative sum at 30, which I see is 4. Look at the cumulative sum at 10, which is 2. And 4 minus 2 is going to give me the amount of spikes that there were there. And intuitively, that should make sense. If I look at what I've seen up to so far up to 10, um, and then I look to, to what I've seen up to, up to 30, 
Well, it really should be, the difference between the two really should be what happened in between, right? So this is analogous to the fact that you have in calculus where you say that, you know, the definite integral from A to B is equal to the definite integral from zero to, to B minus, um, yeah, I need a function too. Definite integral f of t dt um, is equal to definite integral of f of t dt from zero to B minus the definite integral from zero to A. All right, so, so it's really the same thing. The area under the curve of a function from A to B is the area under the curve from zero to B, so the, from the beginning of the time to B, minus the area under the curve from zero to A. So this is the trick I'm gonna use to make this much faster. So it will take n steps instead of the window length times n steps, right? Because if I was gonna do a loop for every window, I would, have to, I would have to have a loop within a loop and that would be really slow. This way I only, can, only need to have one loop and actually the cumulative sum function in NumPy um, implements a loop for us that turns out to be much faster. Okay. Um, so just to remind us, okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load some audio and I'm actually going to um, plot the zero crossings of the audio. Um, actually, yeah, so let's just listen to the audio first. Um, let's move some of this code around a little bit. So, so we have this ominous countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, so this is a little better than the one we were looking at class because she really enunciates the, the consonants here. All right. So my claim in class was that consonants are actually higher frequency than vowels. So we could pick them out by trying to estimate instantaneous frequency in, in windows and looking for, for where they peak. So really, I'm going to be doing something like this. Let me, let me actually go back and show you the chirp example again. Um, I'll do yeah a chirp that's that's lower frequency, but I want to show you, show you the strategy that I'm going to use um, in code. So let's look at the chirp. So this would be um, cumulative sum. No, no, sorry. Uh, this would be zero crossings window dot gif. Okay, so so I'm going to show you what we're about to do on the audio, just on a simple synthetic example. So. We're, going to, we're trying to slide this window along. See here it's got two zero crossings. So I'm drawing the original single signal and then I'm drawing the signal which spikes whenever there's a zero crossing and that's the one that I'm interested in, in summing over an interval. So here I got four, I got five, so I'm plotting it over here. Um, and so you can get the zero crossings in a window by taking the, the cumulative sum of, of all the zero crossings up to the end of the window minus the cumulative sum up to the beginning of the window for the same reason here. Like I was looking for from 10 to 30, how many of these spikes were there. Took the cumulative sum up to 30, subtracted cumulative sum up to 10, that gave me it. So I'm doing the exact same thing here. Um, and this, but this was a linear chirp. And so you see something pretty neat, which is that this, these estimates, I mean, they're a little noisy, they're not perfect because I don't always have all the same number of crossings in here, but you can see that this goes up like a line basically. So this estimate is, is working. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, first, let me just generate this um, thing that peaks every time there's a zero crossing. So yeah, let me just, let me just do this on a simpler example to begin with. Um, so let me say t is equal to mp dot a range. I'll say sr equals 8,000, t is equal to mp dot a range, sr over sr. So y is equal to mp dot cosine two p dot pi times t. Um, and I'll make a pretty low frequency. So I'm just gonna do a regular sinusoid for now. I'm gonna show you, okay, so the zero crossings. Um, yeah, and you know what? I'm actually gonna make this pretty short. Let me just take the first um, 500 samples of this. And let me just plot it real quick to make sure that that's a good range. Um, oops. Okay, I'm just going to take out the first 500 samples. All right, so, so let's just see if we can figure out where the zero crossings are here. Um, 
and I'm going to plot the zero line so we can see. So I did this in class, but I want to do it again. Um, and I want to kind of build it up step by step. So the first thing I can do is to use the sign function. Sign, but it's not the trig function. Um, so let me plot that here. So this is kind of a step in the right direction because um, you know it's either one or negative one. So if it if it changes, then it's going to change by going through a zero crossing. Okay, so that's good. So so I I can look for changes in this function. So let's let's just try to do that. So so the idea is I want to say that zero crossings at index i plus one minus zero crossings at index i, um, that should should change somehow. So first, let me just try to say zero, zero crossings, um, then equals zero crossings um, one to the end minus zero crossings zero. So this is a way to do that for every sample, just using slices. Okay, so, so this is what I want. I can do this in a loop, but I'm gonna do this quicker if I use slices. Take a moment and pause to make sure that makes sense. All right, so, so let me plot this now. Okay, so so this, we're getting there. So what we find is if it changes from um, positive to negative, then we end up getting a negative two. And if it changes from negative to positive, we get a positive two. So, so we can just fix this up by saying, um, first of all, I'll take the absolute value, that'll make them all positive. Um, and then, you know, let me make them one instead of two because I only want to count once for each zero crossing. So, so I'll just multiply that by a half. Okay, so, so now this is gonna get me my zero crossings function that I was showing you up here. So this is code to do that um, without using um, a loop, which is pretty neat. Okay, um, but I want these in a window. So, actually I guess maybe I'll make the frequency increase a little bit here, no. Um, Okay, so it's going to start off pretty slow, and then it's going to increase over time. Um, let me take more samples then. Um, yeah, it doesn't like this. There are too many samples. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me go back to maybe just a thousand samples. Okay, anyway, so, so these zero crossings are going to be increasing over time. So the way that I do them within a window, again, is, is I'm going to do something, I'm going to say, I'll, I'll call it zero crossings window. Um, well, let me start by doing the cumulative sum. Um, but then I want to take um, the cumulative sum. Well, I guess I'll write it out exactly as I did up here. So, so it's the cumulative sum. Um, so we really want the cumulative, for every sample, we want the cumulative sum um, of the zero crossings at index i plus some window. Okay, so I have to define a window length. I guess I'll say it's 100 here, or maybe 200 here. Minus the cumulative sum of the zero crossings up to index i. Just like we did here, we, we can actually avoid a loop here if we just do some slicing. So I can say, okay, well this should be um, win to the end minus um, this. Okay, so, so you have to convince yourself that this does this uh, in a loop, essentially. Okay. So let me just plot this function now. Um, and I guess I will go up a little faster than this. So maybe I'll say 220 or 440 times t squared. Okay, so you see that the zero crossings are going up. So I'm, I'm kind of replicating an example that's a little bit like this. Um, oh, and I can certainly go more t than that. Okay, anyway, so, so now we really see it. All right, cool. All right, so, so that's the code that gets the zero crossings work. Hopefully that makes sense now. So I'm gonna apply this to filter out consonants. So I want code that looks just like this. Um, so I'm just gonna copy this whole block of code down here. 
Um, so yeah, let me just have it exactly how I did here. So I'm gonna load in this audio. I'm gonna choose a window length. Um, yeah, so I already played the audio, but let me load it again here. Um, I'm going to choose a window length and I'm gonna do this the same thing. Let me just plot the zero crossings first. So let me, I'll plot the time to go along with this. Let me make a time array. Okay, so versus time, CCS win. Um, so actually we don't, we're not gonna, because we have to cut the window off at the end, we're not gonna have as many samples and time as we did before. So I have to actually slice this, but let's just look. Okay, so here's the audio. Four, three. Oops, let me start at the beginning again. 10, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, seven oh, wait, six. No, I think, yeah, no, that was right. Okay, let me try it again. 10, 10 nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Zero. So I tried to accentuate every time that um, the, the, the consonants were happening. So one didn't have any, so you didn't really see much here. Um, nine didn't really have any either. Any fricatives like s t. Um, but you see parts of the other ones did. So let's see if we can just filter out the parts that have the consonants. So the slicing here is a little bit tricky because I, I want um, the center of the window that I computed the zero crossings in to line up. But let me try to do it. So what I have to say is why, um, I'm gonna say, you know, starting halfway through the window up to um, that plus length of zero crossings win. Um, yeah, first, so I'm just gonna take out a slice of Y that um, contains all my windows. So, you know, the center of the first window is gonna be at um, the window length over two. And I'm just gonna go up to as many samples as there are um, windows of, of these zero crossings. Okay, so again, I'm trying to center the windows like I did here. Center the windows on the sample that I'm really thinking about here. So I say this is the left range, this is the right range, but I'm actually thinking of this, I'm really estimating the zero crossings instantaneously centered at the center of those two, okay. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna say why, um, wherever the zero crossings, this is really cool, so we can actually, we can do a Boolean selection here. So whenever the zero crossings are greater than um, some threshold, so if I look at this, um, it's probably safe to say, actually a good threshold looks like 250 here. If I'm above 250, I'm gonna cut out your audio. Uh, so I can just say equals zero. So I could do a loop and look, if the zero crossings in index i is greater than threshold, make y at index i zero. NumPy does this for you, it's way faster. So let's listen to this. 10, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so that cut out all the consonants. So now I'm gonna, just to make sure that you're following along, I, I wanna have you do an exercise where you cut out um, the vowels instead, so you're only left with the consonants. All right, so we're gonna do that. <laughs> 